Hello and good evening. My name is John, and we're here playing Your Dry Delight as part of my Steam cleaning series, where I go through every game in my Steam library eventually, then arbitrarily rate and or review them after we go to play time. Now, I don't quite know what this game is. I pick these games at random, but um, from what I do know, this is free. So set your expectations accordingly. We are going to jump in and find out together what this is. Uh, I think it's a visual novel. Ah, what a lovely night. What do you say we go get a drink? Boss, that's the fifth time you used that joke today. Well, it's your fault for making such a hilarious face every time. Cleveland Detected Agency. Richter. My name is August Richter, and I'm a detective. Unfortunately, my parents thought a nice classic name like James or John just wouldn't be good enough for me. Everyone thought I'd be downright hilarious to call me July during my training, but I decided to go by Richter, which going by Richter would suit me just fine. Leslie. Hmm. Richter, I'm hungry. Didn't we just have dinner an hour ago, boss? My, my, but my appetite for good food is never sated, just like my appetite for justice. What do you say? Should we go get some cannoli? A fellow in Little Italy. Oh, Little Italy. Little Italy's are similar to Chinatown's have a large mortgage pop and preserve their culture, forming little pockets in a city that remains another country. Alright, I like the pop-up. I like the pop-up information. Boss. This is no time for cannoli. We got a job to do. Oh, Richter, always such a stick in the mud. Or Rick in the mud. Rick Rick. This fellow right here is my senior partner, Leslie Clark. He wears his hair long and has what you might call a girlish face, so he's seen more of his fair share of teasing too. But somehow, absolutely nothing seems to face him. Case in point, he's worried about cannoli when we're supposed to be tracking down criminals. A true inspiration to us all. All right, all right, let's get on to business. Run through the plan on last time, step by step. You're still new to solo assignments, so I'll make sure you got all the details down pat. Or you've just forgotten them because you fell asleep during our last meeting. How's that? This phrase is the older equivalent of come again, or what do you mean? All right, that seemed a bit obvious. Uh -huh, don't worry about it. I cleared my throat, straightened my posture, and mentally pull up tonight's agenda. You and I are splitting up to gather information on Cleveland's illegal liquor business and, and enforce Volstead. I know what a Cleveland is. A city. Uh, Volstead. Pro Prohibition, okay. I'm heading to the speakeasy on Ness Avenue, and you're meeting with an FBI contact to scope out some warehouses. Hmm. Leslie nods his eyes with his eyes closed, swiveling a little in his chair. Damn it, he better not be dozing off again. For tonight, my cover is Jack Vaughn, and I work for the city government. Yes, so you can say your job is helping civilians, and it'll be technically true because you are terrible at lying. Why'd you get into this line of work again? I heard the agency needed detectives who didn't spend their payroll hours hunting for food. Richter, how cruel. The threatening gr gas Leslie spins rapidly around his office chair like my dry remark just sent him into orbit. Sometimes I wonder about what a bizarre twist of fate landed us together. Purple marks aside, it sounds like you are all prepared. We'll meet back here tomorrow morning to trade reports, drink coffee, eat donuts. Hmm. In my imagination, or is he drooling a little? Ah, and decide our next plan of action, of course. Understood? Loud and clear, boss. I gave him a lazy loop of returning towards the door, smoothing out my vest. Richter. Huh? Please be careful. Watch yourself, stay alert, and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Like what, skipping out on the job to get a cannoli? I'm serious, Richter. You're my partner, and I don't want you to be turned to Swiss cheese by a Tommy gun or something. Tommy gun. Machine gun, yeah, okay. They're really, uh, making an odd set of stuff to focus in on. Huh. He would use a food metaphor. The so promise you be careful, alright? I worry about you whenever you're off on your solo. I worry about you, too. This guy. Doesn't he realize it goes both ways? The small sigh, I rub the back of my neck with a hand, unsure how to phrase what I want to say. I worry about you, too, Leslie. Not that I can help it since you send yourself into sketchy jobs all the time. It's like you're looking to be iced. Iced. Put on ice. Killed. Alright. I may not click on all of these. Hmm. 
Leslie blinks at me if you never ever considered my concern to be a possibility. Really? That's very sweet of you to say, Richter. Hmm. He sniffles, clutching a hand to his collar. Uh, maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut. I mean, I you don't need to get all... But if you're so worried about me, why don't you pick up tomorrow's breakfast? We old geezers need to sleep in sometimes. Ugh. Unless there's something else important, boss, I'm going to head out. All right. So there's some choices so far. Uh, it's an interesting setting. I do like the pop-up text, even though it's a little oddly used right now. Leslie pushes himself up from his chair, stepping over to get to the door for me. I expect great things from your report yesterday, tomorrow, yesterday. <laughs> then luck will be out well on our way to making Cleveland a boring old town, drier than the Sahara Desert. Doesn't sound quite so encouraging, I put it that way, does it? Can't argue there. God bless America. Land with the liquor free. See you in the morning, boss. Give him hell, detective. He reaches out to ruffle my hair fondly, as he often does. I stopped brushing it down a while ago. Leslie always likes to mess up with the first thing anyway. We trade wry smiles, and with that, I head out into the cool night air. Next stop, Richter's first speakeasy. Late title card. Your Dry Delight, starring August Richter, Vampire Hunter, Soft Boil Detective, Leslie Clark, Scatterbrain Boss, Meyer Eastman, definitely not a gangster. Writer, programmer, Donovan, management, Gamma, art, uh, I can't pronounce half those names. Your Dry Delight. Good intro. Door, doorman. Password. Gruff voice, voice whispers to me through a slot in the door. Based on this dizzy restaurant echoes with the muffled sounds of swing music like it's haunted by some ghost jazz, ghostly jazz band. Swordfish. Hmm. The long pause. My informant definitely said the password was swordfish. This isn't a setup, isn't it? Is it? If it is, heads will roll by the end of night, assuming mine's still. The door swing opens before I can finish that thought. Welcome, sir. Please enjoy your night. Thanks, uh, sure I will. I step past a tall, dour doorman into a lot of place I've ever seen, or heard. Smoke everywhere, deafening music, giant gangles of dancers, loitering hopheads. I'm assuming that's beer drinkers? Oh, and actually opium. Okay. Flappers, that's women, posing in their risky skirts, drinking saps. Drunk saps trying to, so flappers, roaring 20s, Short skirt, blonde, bold attitude, saps, idiot, yep. All this laughter and cheer makes you wonder what's so criminal about it. But I guess it's not my job to ask those kind of questions. After I wander on a bit, wandering through the hooch holding crowd, beer, I end up, or booze, I end up loitering by the bar. Huh. Bartender staring at me. I raise the brow at him, offering a sign of defense. What, isn't it normal to come to a speakeasy and not order any liquor? No? His face is definitely saying no. All right, I'd like to order one of the specials. Special comes out of Ed's bathtub, mister. Bathtub gin. Huh. Ah ha ha ha. The bartender bells out a laugh when I freeze in horror. Oh boy, don't worry, it adds to the taste. I am bet it, I sure bet it does. Still laughing, he uncorks a bottle and pours me a glass of clear liquids, stuffing a lime slice in onto the rim. It's like putting a fancy bow on a pile of hoist crap. But I guess I should appreciate the effort. I lift the glass, taking a cautious sip. Oi! Uh, this could be out of context. Uh, ugh. Jesus, that's bad. What does that do in his bathtub? Actually, I don't want to answer to that. I hold my glass of God knows what and lean back against the bar. My gaze wanders around the clouded parlor. The informant said this place is a key part of Cleveland's liquor business. Apparently, it's owned by mobster types. Now I, that I think about it, those guys over there look a little rough around the edges. They're not drinking or dancing, just watching the patrons. Huh. I casually scoot down the bar, getting close enough to overhear their conversation. It's so loud in here that I can't make out what they're saying, but I managed to catch a few words. Darn Italians are tough. Them and the cops. Huh? Did I hear that right? They aren't part of the Italian mob? The Italian mob is Italian. Frank Milano. What who owns this place? It must be a different gang. Some kind of deal. 
That'll work. Risky. I strain my ears as much as I can. Sensing conversation about to get even more interesting. Just one or two hints. Maybe a name. Come on. Only one drink for you tonight, my friend? Huh? A el low, eloquent voice murmurs right in my ear. The culprit smirks at me when I whip my head around in surprise, offering a little wiggle of his fingers in greeting. Tall, suited, and well-groomed, he has an unusually refined look to him. Huh. Is he offering to buy me a drink? Is there any better stuff? I can manage another drink, but not another one of whatever this is. I jerk my chin towards the mild rat poison in my glass. You don't like it, really? I've been told that's one of the best drinks here. One or two more, and I promise I'll start to grow on you. No, really, I like my tongue too much to put it through one more of Satan's mouthwash. Satan's? Sat? I said that right. My dry comment makes the stranger chuckle, and he flashes me a wink. Oh, so that's the problem. Well, never fear, I'll take good care of that tongue of yours. Wink. What's that supposed to mean? Bartender, fresh drink for the delicate tongue gentleman. And the usual for myself. He waves the man at the counter, who quickly nods. Oh. Little kitten break. Just trying to keep this kitten out of trouble. Oh, great. Can't actually get drunk. Darn it. Like this guy here just to ruin my investigation. We'll get you picked up with something that'll tickle your fancy, mister. Trailing out the stranger ranges one eyebrow at me expectedly. Uh, Jack. Jack Vaughn. Jack, hmm? Not the name I'd have picked for you, but I still like it. Really? What name would you have picked? Ask me again after you had a few more drinks. It's behind me, isn't it? As if on cue, the bartender passes a glass towards me. The bar, uh, and gently slides a steaming cup towards my companion. Is that coffee? Thank you, Arthur. Anytime. He throws the man beside me a wildly grin. Can't take the feeling that I'm a butt of some joke, but maybe that's my detective's paranoia talking. You don't drink, huh? I wouldn't call myself a teetotaler, but I do try to stay sharp. Someone who doesn't drink. Right. Well, drinking partner, since you twisted me into this, who exactly am I toasting with again? My name is Meyer, and I'll endeavor to make sure you won't forget it. Huh. How the hell am I supposed to read this guy? If I didn't know it better, I almost think he was trying to... The shame To life, in Hebrew. Exclaiming some sort of toast, he clinks his cup against my glass. The shame Mick Meyer's pronunciation, and when he nod, happily nods in approval, we both sip our drinks. Hurt. Not as bad as Ed's Deluxe. But it still feels like a swallow of a gasoline cocktail. Why the puckered face, Jack? Not a smooth not smooth off of that tongue of yours? Meyer leans in closer, propping his elbow on the counter and gazing at my face. Well, if he's hell bound to being all friendly, maybe I can put some information on him. Hold some information on him. But he knows something. He's got a kind of smug air. Yes, yes. Woe is me and my delicate tongue. Really, where do you get this stuff? Is it all home brewed? Sure, there's a big seller. Of course, why the biggest seller in town, no less. Huh? Wait, well, does know. Now I just have to. But more importantly, why don't you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Or a lot more. I promise I won't mind. Alright, play cool, Richter. You can't rush this or he'll catch on. I'm nobody special, really. I help keep civilians safe, serve the city and all that. Mm-hmm. He smirks deep in for some reason. Just another average fellow here re to relax after a hard day's work. Mm-hmm. Hoping to take the edge off. Uh-huh. Are you just going to sit there and mm -hmm me all night, or what? Well, I don't mean to be rude, but I have a sneaking suspicion that you're lying. Huh? Impossible. You can tell already? Was Leslie right? Am I really that bad at this? Why don't you be honest with me, Jack? Be honest with you? I'm not. Meyer leans even more, leans even more. this time he's taking his arm around my shoulder and pulling me in close. I swallow, trying to keep a hold of myself as his lips brush against my ear. He can't know. There's no way he knows. You're really a Simcha, aren't you? Why was that not highlighted? Simcha? Confused, I steal a glance at Meyer. His eyes glimmer back at me mischievously. A pimp, of course. What? Oh, you can't fool me with that act, Jack. I saw you looking around early for any attractive girl, subtle as a train wreck. Huh. Lord have mercy. If I have to pretend to be a pimp, I think I'll just run out the door instead. 
Puh. Kahaha. <laughs> Look at the last was out of my before I can bite it back. Care to tell me what's so funny? Eh, <laughs> just teasing, free me. I didn't mean any offense. Nor did I think you nearly faint on the spot, but I was quite ready to catch you. Huh. All right, all right, you got me. I was just, you know, horrified that my good name might be ruined. Shook me up. Secretly, of course, I mostly only revealed I didn't actually see through the lie. That was a little too close for comfort. Oh, naturally. An upstanding civil servant like you is ob obliged to maintain his saintly reputation, right? Bartender, another round for the gentleman, if you please. I don't want to get drunk. That was how I got pulled into a night of drinking with a new companion. It soon grows clear that Meyer isn't going to be... He's going to let anything important slip. He managed to dodge all my questions like a pro boxer ducking punches. But I am too invested to turn back. I know he knows something. He knows I know he knows something. But we're just dancing around the subject. As much as I hate to admit it, it's fun talking to him. So much that I nearly forgot what I came here to do. The way he gives me all this attention is, well, flattering in a way. Hmm. While we banter back and forth, I know a sketchy looking man from earlier throwing glances towards us. Are they looking at me? Admire? Just trying to get the bartender's attention. I can't tell, but I got a feeling we're being watched. You don't mind, Jack. I got a question for you. An elbow nudges against my side, interrupting my thoughts. Question? Sure. I'm all ears. Huh. Turn my head back towards Meyer, unless I'm already pressed close to my side. Our cheeks are nearly brushing together. You wouldn't have to be looking for underground work, would you? Huh? My heart skips a beat. He's finally bringing it up. You could say that, more or less. Well, in that case, how about we make a deal? I'll trade you a little bit of information, business information in exchange for something on your end. He whispers conspiratorially to me, lips curled up into a sly, daring smirk. Something, huh? What kind of something are we talking about here? Oh, I'm glad you asked. He, his breath lightly tickles my cheek. For a second, my focus is a little hazy, and I can see all I can see are their sparkling green eyes. My mind races through all the things he might want from me, things I normally never think of until... Bring me a cassetta cake. Bunch cake, sounds nice. Er, a cassetta cake from the, the type from Frank's Bakery on the east side. Almost certainly not kosher, but I won't tell if you don't. I've heard they changed the recipe to something simply amazing, but let's just say I'm not very welcome in that neighborhood. Not exactly the offer I was expecting. A cake, right. I'll think about it, no promises. Playing coy, are we? Very well. I see how it is. He exchanges a small laugh and brushes my skin again, sending a little tingle down my nape of my neck. Please, think it over carefully, and if you decide to set my offer, come back here tomorrow night. How's that sound, Jack? I hesitantly nod. And this wise guy really part of some criminal outfit trading information for cakes? Oh, this kitten is walking on my keyboard. Very cute kitten. Perfect. It'll be plenty worth your while, so keep that in mind. When he finally pulls back, I subconsciously exhale the breath I didn't know I've been holding. No matter how I look at it, he's acting sweet on me. Crush on them. Of course, not like anybody would notice, crowded as this place is. I'm gonna have a favorite kind of drink. Catch me with another question. I'll catch me off guard. I want to have it ready for you tomorrow night. That's awful nice of you. A favorite drink? I guess that'd be whiskey. Whiskey, of course. Still, the guy would be drinking anything else. You don't seem much trouble with the other drinks. Even you didn't seem to have much too much trouble with the other drinks you enjoyed tonight. That's because you were distracting me. Really? Am I that captivating? You were practically holding me captive from the start. So yes. He lets out a low chuckle, shaking his head. There's something charming about his laugh. Maybe the way it comes out from deep in his chest. Gentle, but res resonant. Whiskey it is, then. And only the best kind, as Minsk deserves. A man. I'll make sure to take excellent care of both you and your refined palate. You're acting like I've already made up my... You're leaving? Meyer slips less of his coffee, pushes away, smoothing his hair back with one hand. I'm afraid so, Jack. I got some visit to end, too. But I, I do hope I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and tonight's drinks are my treat. A small token of thanks for your delightful company. The last knowing wing, Meyer steps away from the counter and slips into the crowd, mingling with the drunken sea. Huh. He left so suddenly. I wonder what business he's attending to. Well, never mind. I guess I can lose tonight's investigation. What a ride. Alright. 
Uh, I'm going to call it here. Uh, this has been your dry delight, not mine, yours. You, the, you the viewer. Uh, I think this is pretty good. Uh, it's a free visual novel. The uh, fair bit of choices in there. Uh, the characters have been interesting. I do like the pop-up text, even though it's a little spotty on the words you know, but that could just be, you know, every, everybody has different knowledge when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, I, I would probably play more of this, but I got to cut it short because there is a cat eating my fingers. On the other hand, cheers.